Hello and welcome to the program. My name is Marie Yambo. As usual, our social media handles at Marie Yambo at KBC Channel 1 on Twitter, KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook. Now, preterm birth is when a baby is born too soon. Uh, but how soon is too soon? Well, that is what we're going to be finding out today. In Kenya, premature births pose a considerable challenge due to various factors, including limited access to healthcare facilities, inadequate prenatal care, poverty, and a lack of awareness about maternal and child health. Well, to speak to us about premature births is Hannah Maina. Now, Hannah is a neonatal nurse at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital uh, in the newborn unit. Also here to share her experience is Sela Odero. She is a mother who gave birth to a preterm baby. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for coming to share your story, Sela, and uh, also Hannah for uh, coming here to just enlighten us about uh, preterm births and all that. So before we even uh, engage Sela about her experience, first of all, Hannah, what is a, a preterm birth? Yeah, a preterm baby is a baby born before 37 completed weeks of gestation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when you say 37 uh, weeks uh, before the 37 weeks of gestation, does it mean um, if a child is born within that 37 weeks, um, does it really matter whether the weight also um, is, is low or if the weight is okay, would that child still be uh, termed as um, a preterm baby? Yeah, thank you. Uh, a a preterm baby also can be categorized uh, by weight. Mm -hmm. A baby born with a weight less than 1,000 gram, that is one kg, is termed as an extreme preterm baby. A baby born uh, with a birth weight of 1,100 to 14, 1499 grams is a moderate preterm baby. And a baby born at 1,500 grams to 2,500 grams is a uh, a late preterm. Ah, so we okay. can categorize preterm babies mm -hmm. according to gestational weight, mm -hmm. gestational age, mm -hmm. and birth weight. Okay. Yes. So any baby born before 37 weeks? 37 completed weeks of gestation. 37 completed weeks of gestation. Weeks of gestation, of gestation that is a preterm baby. Yes. This is where I want to bring Stella, and you're a mother of, uh, is it a one year old now? Yeah, one year old. Oh, she's now one year old, yeah. Yes. And uh, you gave birth to her uh, prematurely. Yes. So maybe you could tell us uh, at what, uh, can I say, uh, how many weeks uh, had, had uh, how many weeks um, in our preterm? I, I got my baby at 28 weeks and uh, she was extreme preterm, as Hannah has said. She was uh, 800 grams. So she was even less than what Hannah is saying, yes. than the 1,000 uh, grams, which is just about a, a kg. So she was less than a kilogram. Yeah, she was less than a kilo. Mm -hmm. Then later mm -hmm. she dropped, while well in the incubator, she dropped until 700 grams. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, how difficult was it for you to, can I say, uh, in terms of delivery? It was really difficult in terms of uh, high blood pressure and considering I had fibroids too. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and we'll be coming to that because um, those are some of the causes that can actually lead to uh, a, a mother giving birth to a preterm baby. But let me come back to you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. She's just put it there like the baby was 800 grams, less than a kilogram. Yes. You know, and um, the baby at the same time was preterm. Um, what are some of the health challenges that a preterm baby, you know, uh, born especially that extreme preterm, uh, can um, can uh, experience? And even as you answer that, maybe the other question I want to ask you: She mentioned about seven hundred grams. The baby dropped. Is that something that uh, happens? Yeah, it is normal for a baby to drop from uh, uh, from his birth weight because. Uh, this baby is uh, this baby is a baby who has been used to the intrauterine uh, environment, and now the baby is now born to uh, to the outside uh, extrauterine uh, environment. So this baby uh, 
for the baby to adapt to the extra uterine uh, environment, the baby has to lose some weight. Also, the maternal hormones that were circulating in the baby's uh, circulation, they are withdrawn. This makes this baby to lose some of the weight. And also, through passing of urine and uh, meconium, the baby tends to lose some weight. Okay. So it is very normal for the baby to lose 7 to 10 percent of their birth weight. Okay. Yes, then they regain later after two weeks. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, something, you mentioned something very interesting there, and maybe most of our viewers do not know, including myself, that actually uh, babies while they're in the womb, yes. uh, apart from the fact that they're feeding, they also excrete just like, you know, uh, any normal baby born or any person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is usually normal for, for any living living uh, being mm -hmm. or organism mm -hmm. to excrete, mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. So these babies are not exceptional. They breathe, they excrete, and also they have the, the circulatory system is also functional. Mm -hmm. Now that it is only that they have their fetal circulation. They oh. don't use the, mm -hmm. the normal adult circulation. Okay. Yes. So now that you're talking about preterm uh, births or preterm babies for that matter, uh, what are some of the causes of, uh, uh, for a woman to actually give birth too soon? Yeah, some of the causes are uh, maternal causes. Maternal causes are like uh, diseases like uh, high blood pressure. Uh, maternal causes can be like uh, alcohol, alcohol use in uh, pregnant mothers. Other causes can be a multiple pregnancy. If a mother is carrying more than one fetus, that can predispose, predispose a mother to giving birth to a preterm baby. And uh, some of the uh, Fetal causes are like uh, also uh, causes can be like also the mm. multiple pregnancy. Yeah. The two fetus also mm. uh, the the mother carrying more than one fetus mm. in the uterus mm. that can predispose a mother to deliver a preterm baby. Okay. Other causes are like uh, are like nutritional causes. Mm. If a mother is uh, has deficiency, deficiency, nutritional deficiency, uh, she's not able to sustain the the, the, the pregnancy, mm -hmm. and also infections like warm urinary tract infections, okay. those can cause a mother to deliver a preterm baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, Stella, I remember us talking before, and yours was um, I know she's mentioned quite a number of. Uh, reasons. What did the doctors tell you and how was your experience during the pregnancy? Uh, when I went to the hospital uh, on my d uh, daily clinics, I, d uh, I got to talk to my, my doctor and uh, she told me the high blood pressure was high. Mm -hmm. uh, considering I had fibroids and uh, the high, high blood pressure, the high, the high blood pressure had sucked a lot of water from my baby. So the delivery had to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. So yours was an issue of high blood pressure. Yes. Uh, and uh, fibroids. Yes. But did you know that you had fibroids? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So the last minute when I went to the hospital during the scan, it showed that I had multiple fibroids, and when I had when I was pregnant, there was no signs of uh, pain or signs of fibroids, mm. or any signs <coughs> of blood pressure, mm -hmm. yeah. Hannah, can, can these causes be identified early? Yeah, 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 we encourage mothers to, to do early antenatal screening, uh, to do pre preconceptional care. Uh, in this way, you can go to the nearest clinic and have yourself checked for any of these, like now the fibroid, uh, your blood pressure can be also be monitored and also you in the clinic you can be given uh, folic and uh, folic especially which prevents uh, mothers from uh, getting uh, babies with congenital anomalies. Okay. So it is advisable for mothers to do preconceptional care 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what are some of the challenges, um, um, Asela, uh, was your baby born with? Because already when the baby is born too soon, that means they have not developed as much. But uh, Hannah will be giving us more of what some of these challenges are. So for you in your experience, what are some of the challenges that your, your baby girl was born with? Uh, she was born with jaundice, which led uh, her to be kept in the blue light for some time. And uh, later she was, she had, we discovered that she had a tongue tie, which was difficult for her later to suck. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is, is it the sucking only that was a problem for her when, when she was born with the tongue tie? The cry, also the cry was a bit uh, slow mm -hmm. and uh, they call it the slow cry or mm -hmm. the weak cry, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, maybe Hannah could elaborate more what uh, the, the weak cry is all about and some of the complications yeah. that the preterm babies are born with. Yeah, as she has said, not born with, that they develop. Oh, I can talk okay. about the complications that they develop. Mm. Mostly they develop jaundice, the jaundice of preterm. Their red blood cell breakdown is very rapid mm. compared to the term babies and compared to the adult. And bearing in, in, their, in mind that their liver is not well developed to excrete the excess bilirubin. Mm. So they also develop an anemia of prematurity. So because of the rapid breakdown of the red blood cell, they tend to develop anemia. They also develop rickets. This is caused by deficiency of uh, vitamin D. And they also develop some, uh, they have delayed milestone. Most of them, you cannot compare them, their development with the baby's born term. Mm -hmm. Most of them have uh, delayed milestones. Mm -hmm. And uh, but with therapy and care, they, 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 they usually over, uh, overcome the challenges. Okay. Yes, the challenges, they are manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Sala, uh, Hannah has just mentioned about uh, some other challenges that the child might have and like de delayed milestones. I don't know, uh, your baby is now one year old, so definitely uh, she survived through the, the preterm, uh, you know, um, uh, birth and now is one year old. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are some of the challenges that you're noticing with her at this moment? Uh, currently, she is not able to walk, but she's uh, trying. Uh, also, saying some words because of the tongue tie is a bit difficult. Where well, like saying "mama" or "papa," it can be a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. But and. Uh, also, latching, latching of my breast is, is a bit difficult to, considering she is one year and the tongue tie is still there. Mm. Even eating can be a problem because while eating she might spill. Mm. And okay. yeah, so it takes time for her to eat also. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and w what are the, uh, are the challenges, if I may <coughs> just take you back? Mm -hmm. You know, giving birth to a child with, say, a kilogram is still a worry or at least a challenge for a mother. Yeah. Giving, a, a, a giving birth to a child with 800 kilograms, I would believe is even more challenging. I can't describe it. Yeah. So what are some of those challenges that you went through, you know, when your baby was that small? Uh, it was difficult holding her and uh, tying the diaper. You know, we don't have the, in the market, we don't have the preterm diapers. Mm. We only have the, the small diapers. So tying the diaper was a bit challenging for me and uh, maintaining the, the, the nutrients that she, w she, has, she has, to, rec she has to, to take each and every day, considering there were, there were medicines that she was supposed to take a substitute to complete the nutri nutrients in her body. Mm -hmm. So buying them was a bit hectic and uh, difficult okay. to accomplish, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is, is she using any of those nutrients at this moment or now that she's one year old, she's, uh, her weight also has increased and she's at a good weight? Uh, right now I, I, I can say that she's a bit better co uh, considering I was seeing a nutritionist mm -hmm. and uh, I stopped using the, the supplements. Mm -hmm. I'm supplementing them with food, yes. Mm -hmm. Y you know, Hannah, she, she mentioned about latching, yes. uh, 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 you know, a preterm baby. Um, even for a term baby, mothers still have a, a, a quite a big challenge. Yes. Um, what are some of the uh, challenges you see mothers go through at the neonatal unit? Yeah, most of the mothers have fear. 
now this mother did not expect this baby to come too soon. Mm -hmm. And now the baby has come too soon. The baby is very tiny. The mother, for example, maybe is a first time mother. Whether a mother is a first time or a how many time mother, experience in the newborn unit, I don't think you c no one can get used to it. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems they usually have is anxiety and fear. Mm -hmm. Especially when, uh, for example, they come in the incubator, they see these very tiny babies below, below 1,000 grams. Handling the babies is a major problem to them, but we, the nurses at the newborn unit, our major role is to encourage the mothers, mm. talk to them, and help them uh, come through the, 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 the experience and uh, we, most of the time, we sit with them and uh, encourage them, and uh, mm -hmm. we also teach them mm -hmm. how to handle the babies. And uh, most of the time, we find ourselves doing more than the mothers can do. Mm -hmm. And we, we have the, uh, 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 we have uh, 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 a, a, a family-centered care mm -hmm. where we sit with the family. Mm -hmm. We teach the mothers that they are also an integral part of the baby's management. So involving them in the care of the baby, they become, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they now develop uh, the courage. The courage. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. now moving forward, we work as a team. Okay. Yes, and uh, most of the challenges are overcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so you know, when, when you talk about a preterm baby, Yes. What comes to mind for very many people is the incubator. Yes. So when the child is born, you know, the child is preterm. Yes. So the, uh, do they automatically go into the incubator or uh, what happens? And then as you talk to us about the incubator, there's also the kangaroo mother care. Yes. How, 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 how do those work hand in hand? Yeah. Uh, the major role of an incubator in a newborn unit is to preserve warmth. Uh, these babies who are born before 37 completed weeks tend to develop hypothermia because of their very delicate skin mm -hmm. and they do not have the adipose tissues beneath their skin. So the major complications they develop is hypothermia. So this incubator is there to preserve the warmth, to keep the babies warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, by keeping the baby swarm, th we, you, we prevent complications that come along with hypothermia. Mm -hmm. So not all babies who come to newborn unit who are preterm go to the incubators. Some are born without uh, complications like uh, respiratory distress syndrome. This is a pre breathing complication. Some are born uh, without having any other complication apart from low birth weight or being born below 37 completed weeks of gestation. Mm -hmm. These mothers can start kangaroo mother care as soon as possible when the mother is ready. Mm -hmm. So not all babies who are born preterm go to the incubators. Mm -hmm. The mother also can serve as that incubator and the warmth from the mother is even better than the warmth in the incubator, bearing in, in mind that the kangaroo mother care has other benefits like bonding. It also improves milk let down. You see, if you, 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 the mother and the baby remains in contact, mm -hmm. there is that uh, release of happy hormone, mm -hmm. oxytocin, mm -hmm. that make the, the, the milk let down, the milk flow and the milk let yeah, down. So mm -hmm. kangaroo mother care has more benefits than a baby Just being in the incubator. Okay. So we only keep the babies in the incubator when the mother is not there, mm -hmm. when the mother is not stable to start ca kangaroo mother care, yeah. or when we need more close uh, monitoring of this baby, mm -hmm. or the baby may need oxygen. You cannot give a mother who is a baby. There are two types of kangaroo mother care. There is a continuous kangaroo mother care and there is intermittent. Intermittent is when they come and practice kangaroo mother care for a few hours, especially one hour. Then we return the babies to the incubators. Okay. For the continuous kangaroo mother care, they remain with the baby the 
the whole day, day yeah. and night. Mm -hmm. We on, they are only uh, they, 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 they only not practice kangaroo mbeza care when they are going to the toilet okay. or bathing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so it, mm -hmm. kang kangaroo mother care, and for those who don't know, is when the baby is actually put on the chest of on the mother. Skin on the skin to skin. On the skin, contact. but yes. actually it's on the ch uh, on the chest of the mother. Yes. Uh, uh, skin to skin. Skin uh, to skin. Contact. Yes. Did, did you practice that, uh, uh, Salah? And how was it yes, for I you? Did. And what did you? What, what some of what are some of the benefits you saw developed? Developmental, uh, you know, milestone you saw when you, you used mother, ma, kangaroo mother care? It was very effective. Uh, I got to bond with my baby. The milk was flowing very well. And uh, considering the weight, the weight accumulated, uh, let's say, like uh, in a day, if you do a uh, kangaroo, the baby can gain about 20 grams more than the normal. So considering using kangaroo, the weight, the weight was uh, mm -hmm. consider considerably so good. So the baby was able to increase their weight, yes. um, you know, uh, by and by, yes. because of the use of kangaroo mm -hmm. and definitely other health uh, develop. Uh, I mean, other other health benefits. You yes. know, you, you also were able to experience that. Yes. So we are almost coming to the end of our discussion uh, mm -hmm. this evening, but um, Hannah. Yes. Where, w there's a mother probably watching uh, and they're worried they have a, a preterm baby. What are the survival uh, chances for or survival rate for uh, preterm babies? Yeah, preterm baby is just like any other baby. With good care, with good management, they have 100 chances of survival. If a mother happens to deliver a preterm baby, whether in the at home, in a health facility does n that does not support a uh, newborn unit, mm -hmm. if they transfer this baby very early to a newborn unit that uh, supports uh, newborn care, especially an, a facility with incubators, the survival rate is, uh, mm -hmm. is guaranteed. Is guaranteed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Salah, you are a good example of a mother who gave birth to a preterm baby, and now she's one year, she's growing strong, yes. and all that. What would you want to tell mothers out there who are, are, are experiencing what you did experience? Everything is possible. If my baby survived, every other baby can survive, no matter how small she is. You just have to do as you are instructed, put her to kangaroo, give her the nutrients she requires, and follow the instructions. And everything is possible mm -hmm. when, you are, when you put all the hard work and you concentrate on your baby. Okay. Yes. So that means the care that is the child gets in hospital, then there's definitely the follow-up, Hannah, for how the child should be taken care of when yes. you go back at home. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, you could uh, end, Anna, by just... Um, you know, giving advice to women out there who probably are planning to have, um, you know, a baby or something. What are some of the steps they need to take, hopefully, to prevent uh, preterm births? Yeah, as we mentioned, uh, causes of preterm babies, um, I mentioned earlier. So, for a mother who is planning to conceive, kindly come to the clinic very early before you before conception, you'll be given preconceptional care. It, it is a, a care, it is a bundle of care that is in every facility. Then uh, if you happen, you happen to have conceived and you have not come to the clinic, please come to the clinic. You'll be given uh, antenatal corticosteroid that will uh, help to develop this baby's lungs and uh, even if you deliver a preterm baby, your baby is in a better position than if you did not come to the clinic. Okay. Then uh, I think it is better to involve partners in the in the in every step that you take either during conception, because if you happened to have delivered a preterm baby, uh, there is high chances of you delivering another preterm baby. So I think it is better for the families to be involved in the, in the, in the process okay. of uh, childbearing. Childbearing. Yes. Yeah, right from the conception 
to, to delivery. Yes. Okay. Yes. So thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you so much, Stella, for sharing your experience with us. I, I hope back at home they've also learned a lot in terms of what a preterm baby or, uh, you know, preterm birth is all about and some of the steps you can take as a mother who, or as a woman who is planning to, uh, you know, conceive uh, in order to prevent uh, preterm delivery. So thank you so much once again. My name is Maria Yambo and I hope to see you again next week.